Hi guys, so in this video we'll talk about Maven Securities interview question. So in case you do not know about Maven Securities, so it is one of the top trading firms. I mean, they specialize in the business of market making and uh, their pay is also top notch. They hire one of the companies filled with some of the smartest guys and they do a lot of hiring from India. I mean, I've seen a lot of IITians who work at Maven Securities at their London office. So let's jump into it. So before discussing the question, there are some prerequisites that you should be knowing. So you should be knowing about C uh, about templates in C++, you should be knowing about full specialization of templates, what is partial specialization of templates. So these three things I have taught in my previous videos as well. And you should be knowing about periodic templates, which I will cover in this video. And apart from that, the default template arguments and non-type template arguments. So this also I will cover in my video. So all the code artifacts will be from C++ 17. I mean, if you are using any version less than C++ 17, so they might not work. Uh, so like some of the code which I will provide might not work there. Apart from that, another thing is that Maven also as a company, they are they also use C++ 20 only. I mean, they usually prefer guys who have knowledge of C++ 20. If not C++ 20, then at least C++ 17. But anyways, let's jump into what the question is. So the question, yeah, again, like before going into the question, let me explain you what variadic templates and all those things are. So you should you might be aware about like what is what are normal templates in C++ I mean what are templates are basically in C++ like this is one of the example of template that this function can be called with any type of argument so the way you uh, define a generic function or a function template is this that you tell that this is a template and then you do this type name arg and this is the arg so this argument can be of any type okay so this is a normal C++ template but in variadic templates the only difference is that this particular template function can accept any number of arguments of any type okay so the syntax to define that is this you do template type name and then there is these three dots so these three dots are in c++ they are the terminology for these three dots is ellipses so type name ellip ellipses args and the way you define first function arguments are again like this you define the type of args and then these ellipses and then args so this means that this function can be called with any number of arguments of any type like you can call this function with empty argument you can call it with one argument of type integer you can call it with two arguments one of them is integer one of them is a const cat star then again you can call this with four arguments where one of them is integer the second one is character the third one is a floating point number and the fourth is const cat star so these are variadic templates that they take vari variable number of template arguments of any type okay and again, like variadic templates, this was a function template. You can also define class or structure templates. Like this is a struct vector, uh, which takes any number of integer arguments. Okay. So you can instantiate this struct with empty arguments or with, uh, this vector can have one integer or two integer, three integer, or like 10 integers. Okay. And similarly, uh, you can define another type of class template with, uh, which accepts any number of any type of arguments. So like this is a tuple in case you have, this is almost similar to what a tuple is in Python. I mean, there are only subtle differences, but yeah, even in Python, a tuple can, you know, have any num any type of arguments. Basically it can store data of any type. So this is similar to that, that we have defined type name ellipsis ts, and this is our tuple. And the way you can instantiate this tuple is that it can have empty argument or it can store one integer or it can store an integer or character again integer care float anything i mean it can even store integer care float bool string so this is what is the concept of periodic templates in c++ in case you did not understand it you can watch it again or you can also read about them at, on cpp reference so now let's jump into the question what the interview question is so question is simple that you are given a vector so the vector is given in the form of structure template so this is the template that it accepts any number of integers and you like you can assume the vector is sorted and you have to re remove the adjacent duplicate elements from the vector and this has to be done at the compile time only okay not runtime compile time so that is the catch for example like you are given this vector which contains numbers 1 2 2 2 3 4 4 5 so eventually the algorithm should produce this vector where you know no duplicates are there so 1 2 3 4 5 and order is also pre preserved if the vector is unsorted, then it is expected that duplicates will remain, but adjacent duplicates won't be there. Like this vector is unsorted, which is 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 4, 4, then 1, then 5. So you can see here that there are no adjacent duplicates. So the output comes out to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 5. So we have to do it at compile time. So it means we have to write a, this question is 
based on template meta programming so we need to write a meta function so like more formally you can define this as that that you have to write a meta function i have already explained that meta functions are usually structured templates and this takes this meta function will take the vector as an argument this is our your meta function unique and eventually it would expose a type and the way anyone will check your code is like this like you pass this unique this vector and when you check its type so if you have tasked the vector which has numbers 1 2 2 2 3 4 4 5 so eventually the type should be same as this vector 1 2 3 4 5 okay and the way to check this particular thing is in in c++ is using this type trait function which is is same v so this is same v basically tells that it takes two arguments and tells that uh, whether those two arguments have same type or not okay and again this is same v is a type trait which is basically implemented via template meta function so it works at compile time only so this is how your code will be checked so let's see how we can do this so first let's look at a simpler version of it let's say that this compile time constraint was not required so how would you have you know solved it using a how would you have developed a function which you know returns the output at runtime so it would have been simple like you would define a function unique which takes the input vector and basically returns the output vector so the way this algorithm works is that like we are checking if this input is empty or not if it is empty we return early otherwise we have this output vector and in this output vector we have first stored this first element and we initialize that previous variable using the first element of the vector and we push this first element in the output vector now we iterate over all the elements in this particular input vector and we see that we basically have to check whether we have adjacent duplicates or not so if the current element is equal is not equal to previous element it means you no know, like these are adjacently unique elements we can put this basically push back this in our output vector and we initialize our previous as a as the element only this current element if the current element and previous element are same we don't do anything we just ignore it and eventually we'll return the output okay so the core backbone of this algorithm are two things like one is that we are running a for loop which is iterating over all elements of the input vector and the second thing is this if check so we if somehow we can implement these two things in our template function which works at compile time we would be good i mean we can write the algorithm or a template meta program or a template meta function so these are the two things which we need to take care about so i will teach you how you can do this like what is the way or technique to implement a for loop and a if check in a meta function so for loop can be implemented using recursion like you can recursively iterate over the vector input vector and if check and let's see how if check can be implemented okay so what we would do is something like this like this is a dry run of the test case you can say based on which we will develop our meta function so you see all we care about is are the adjacent elements like the first element and the next element to it okay so let's say this is our in initial state this is your input vector and currently the output vector is empty we just look at the first and second element which is one and two so these are unique so i push this first element that is one in my output vector and update my input vector so my input vector will be this remaining uh, whatever is remaining so my input vector has become now this triple two three double four five now again i check these two members and i see whether these two are same or not okay so they are same in that case i will not update my output vector but I will update my input vector like every time from the input vector we will be removing the first element so i remove this particular two now i have this left again i check whether first or second elements are same or not they are same i do not update my output vector so you can see my output vector remains ve same only at the next step as well and i remove the first element from the input vector so now my input vector becomes this two three four four five now first and second elements are not same i update my output vector that is i push back this two in my output vector and i update my input vector as well that is i remove the first element now i have this vector three double four five this three and four are not same i will update my output vector that is push this first element of input vector in add push back the first element of input vector in my output vector so output vector becomes vector one two three and remove this first element to get the updated input vector that is vector four four five again uh like these four and four are same i do not touch my output vector i update my input vector and eventually four and five are not same this 
output vector will be updated input vector will be updated by removing the first element and then we have just five remaining so here it is like uh, this my output vector is eventually uh, updated like I push back this five so now we our input vector is empty that means we have iterated over the whole and we have the output vector so this is how we are going to this is like how we will implement the for loop now the thing is how do we check whether the first and second elements are same or not so let's see so let's look at the code now so the code of meta function will be simple like you have this unique meta function that is a st uh, template structure it takes two template argument one of them is input vector and the second one is output vector your output vector is default initialized with an empty vector okay because your output initially is empty so this is our initial state which our primary template will be defined upon now we need to do the partial specialization of our primary template to handle these two cases so the if case if check that whether the first and second element are same or whether first and second element are different will be handled by partial specialization of template that's why i told you that partial you need to know what is partial specialization of template so this is the case which is which handles that uh, so this is particular the partial specialization which handles the case where first and next element are same so the way we defined our uh, unique template is like this like it has this this is our first element in tie and this is the uh, these are the remaining el elements so like we do not know how many remaining elements are there so that's why we have defined it using the variadic template that is int ellipsis tail and this uh, denotes the element in the output vector okay so again we do not know how many elements are there in our output vector so that's why we have again defined it using uh, variadic template so the unique vector is this sorry the unique meta function is this this will be your input vector so we are denoting the case where first and second elements are same so that's why i have defined it like this i comma i then tail so this i i denotes that these two elements are same and this is our output vector okay so in this case what would happen that what we were doing is that we do not touch our output vector we because these first two elements are same we do not push back anything in it but we update our input vector so our input vector we will remove the first element from our input vector so that's why the type for this would be this that whatever we we will basically recursively call this unique uh, meta function and the argument we will pass it to it that our input vector is this vector i comma tail we have removed the first element and our output vector is same whatever we received okay so whatever would be the type returned by this meta function will be our actual type now the second case we need to handle is that where we have the first two elements different so this is the partial specialization for that again we have this int i int tail and int output vector elements you see this is the case where first and second element are different so we have denoted it using this vector i comma tail and this is our output vector and in this case what we were doing is that we will recursively call unique for this but the argument which will be passed to this meta function is this that our input vector is updated we have removed the first element which is i so vector tail and our output vector in our output vector we will push the push back this first element so that's why this has become out vector elements comma i and whatever will be the type returned by this meta function will be the type of this particular meta function and eventually we handle the case where our input vector becomes empty because we are doing because we are doing recursion here so we need a base condition or a termination condition so the termination condition is this when our input vector is exhausted so you can see this partial specialization handles that case that your input vector is empty and this is your output vector in that case your type would be this output vector only so eventually when you will run this code so i can show you what the so the code is this only this was your vector these were your primary template and the three partial specialization of this unique meta function and we will check this we will do this static assert that you know the type returned uh, by this unique meta function we pass when we pass this vector one triple two three double four five should be the same only i mean if i learn this and if our compilation pass because these static hazards are done at compile time only so it means that our code is correct okay so i mean if yeah so i think that was mostly it so one thing i also want to cover about a uh, variadic template is this i think i forgot to cover it before is this one that usually variadic templates can are used to implement recursion i mean as i told you that we have implemented the for loop using recursion in our uh, in our meta function so for recursion variadic templates are used so let me show you how so here i have implemented a print method which can take any number of arguments and is able to print it okay we do not know what how many arguments 
the client will pass it and what would be the type of those arguments but we need to make sure that we print all of them so what i have done is this that i capture the first argument using this particular type name head and the rest of the arguments i'm capturing using a variadic template okay so that is type name and this ellipsis and i'm noting the rest of the arguments as tail okay so what i would do is that i would print the first argument and then i would recurse on the rec rec recurse on the remaining arguments so using this tail this ellipsis i am recursing on the remaining arguments and eventually this is a recursion so we need a termination condition so the termination condition is just that when we have exhausted all arguments we just see out and del and we return so you see here that we can call it using this uh, here the argument is empty so this particular print will be called here we are passing it one argument so in this case our head would be one our head would be when this template would be called in this case our head would be one and our tail will be empty okay tail is empty in this case what would happen is that our head would be one and our tail will be these two characters that uh, that is c and messy okay so when this method is called so here we will print the first one that is we'll print the head that is one and then we'll recurse on the remaining argument so when we will call this print with these two arguments c and messy so what would happen is this that the method which will be called here will initialize our head as c and our tail will become messy and eventually when that is called so in, so when this would happen we will come here and we will see out the head which is c messy and then we will call print again with the remaining arguments which is this messy so in that case our head would be messy and tail would be uh, empty and eventually we will call this empty which is this and we will end up like the recursion will be terminated so this is how periodic templates are used to implement recursion okay and that is what we did here as well like you can see that i will capturing the first argument like here i was capturing the first two arguments and rest of the arguments were captured using variadic template and here i was just capturing first argument and the rest of the arguments were captured using variadic templates apart from that one doubt which can come into your mind is this that these are almost same representation of this vector like i comma tail and this is i comma i comma tail so when this particular vector is passed let's say 1 comma 1 comma 2 and then when this vector is passed 1 2 3 so for which case which one is preferred so for this case this will be preferred as compared to this because the way c++ compiler works is that it does a pattern matching and it tries to find the best match so when it would do a pattern matching so it can see that the best match for this is for this particular use case is this because here both i i are same that is 1 1 and the remaining arguments are tail that is 2 but for this case the best match is this okay that is i is tail and i is 1 and the remaining arguments are 2 comma 3 so you can also refer this maven interview question on their website i mean here they have posted it maven securities interview question revealed i will paste the link to this in the description section so i think that was it for this video i hope you guys like this video please do not forget to like subscribe and comment and i'll see you all next time